Welcome back to Season 18 of my Out of the Park 23 Historical Save. Let's continue our first season at the helm of the Blue Jays. We have really held our own so far, sitting in third place, just two games behind the first place Red Sox, and one and a half games out of the wild card. The Rangers and Angels hilariously share the AL West lead with 16 and 19 records. In the NL, the Pirates just rode a 13-game winning streak to the top of the NL Central, just ahead of the Astros and Brewers. Lance Berkman is lighting up the American League and won Batter of the Month in April. His 4.23 average, 12 homers, and 109 total bases all lead the American League. The Dodgers built a seven-game lead in the NL West thanks to sluggers Juan Gonzalez and Tony Batista leading the National League in home runs. And these guys aren't even their best hitter. Rafael Palmero earned NL Batter of the Month and collected his 2,000th career hit in the process. He's carrying a cool 381, 481, 698 slash line so far this season. The Phillies got off to a 12-0 start and are first place in the NL East. They have Tim Rumor to thank for that. He won his first six games and took home NL Pitcher of the Month for April before falling to the Rockies at Coors this week. The Orioles are in contention as well, handing reigning AL Fireman of the Year Heath Haynes slots of save opportunities. He's got eight of them, including the 200th of his career earned on May 5th. His teammates also made history this season with a combined no-hitter against the Rays. Macario Gastelum threw seven and two-thirds innings of no-hit ball, but six walks raised his pitch count to 133, so Jamie Navarro came in to complete the accomplishment. Gary Matthews Jr. has the first cycle of the season, however his Cardinals lost the game and are last in the NL Central again. Let's talk Blue Jays. We rank high in both runs scored and runs against. Our plus 46 run differential is just behind the Chicago White Sox for best in the American League. The most pleasant surprise has been our bullpen. It looked like a huge weakness going into the season, but our 225 ERA ranks first in the National League. We're also first in strikeouts and defensive efficiency. Junior Felix is off to a nice start with the bat, has passed Tony Fernandez for the franchise lead in career games played and runs scored. Our young superstar Rafael Fercal has a sore elbow which put him on the DL. Top pitching prospect Roy Oswalt is still injured but should return in July. Our other top prospects, Tony Dermenziev, Christian Presici, and Ben Broussard are all performing well. All our minor league affiliates are playing above 500 ball. Designated hitter Kevin Millar has been our star with the bat. He's near the league lead in several offensive categories. Junior Felix has a pretty looking 300, 400, 500 slash line going. The unsung heroes are Damon Smith and Kevin Witt. Smith has been an excellent table setter in the two hole, making me think twice about that Dermenzi of call up. Meanwhile, Kevin Witt has tied Millar for the team lead with 10 home runs. Second base has been the position with the problem. Holbert Cabrera has been ineffective and backup Jason Maxwell is currently filling in for Rafael for call at shortstop. Kevin Ory is also on shaky ground at third base. His defense is great, but the bat's been pretty quiet and he's lost his captain status. We've yet to agree to an extension with Rafael for call. I'd value him around five and a half million per season on the free agent market, so paying him nearly seven per season doesn't exactly seem appetizing. Might as well kick the tires on Junior Felix as well. He wants three and a half million per season where I value him at about 3.2. The real buzzkill is the six years for a fragile 31 year old. No thanks. Hideo Nomo has absolutely pitched like the ace that we wanted him to be. His ERA is under three, though he only has two wins to show for it. Johan Lopez has complimented him nicely in the rotation and he's getting the ball for us today. While our entire bullpen is overachieving, Setup man Julio Parra has been the star with a 110 ERA, three saves, and a 15 to 1 strikeout to walk ratio. Darren Hall's been a bit fortunate, but pretty effective in the closer role, collecting seven saves. Speaking of fortunate, Kevin Lake is the very definition of it. His peripherals don't look good at all, but he's escaped with an ERA under three, four wins, and won the AL Pitcher of the Month award. Youngster Roy Halliday is really struggling, though. He got hammered a few times in AAA. He's since got a call up and allowed five home runs in just 10 innings with the big club. Darren Hall's another guy worth an extension look. One and a half million is pretty reasonable as I value him around two million, but he's 34 years old and sure to regress over those two seasons. We've got a key stretch of games coming up now, highlighted by seven of our next 10 against the division leading Red Sox. Early MVP favorite Lance Berkman anchors this vicious lineup, 
Leadoff man Brent Breedy is also on fire at 380 average, comes with a 470 on base percentage. Just think how potent this offense will be if and when Jorge Posada and Russ Brannion get on track. Top starting pitchers Mark Gardner and Dave Fleming are a cold, but number three starter Edgardo Vasquez is 4-1 and one and starts against us today. He was an integral part of my 1996 World Series rotation. Underperformed after that, was sent to Boston at last season's trade deadline. We ended up facing him in Game 3 of the World Series, which you can watch by clicking above. His lineup suggests we're overmatched against this team, but let's see how we handle him today. Brent Brady lined out to second to start the game. Get Pat Burrell out. Ooh, we're going to get Berkman too. One, two, three. <clears throat> Ratliff's been leading off with Furcall injured. Demond Smith remaining in the two hole. Yeah, that's Grajek. Got a diving catch on Junior Felix. Quick first inning. And maybe Posada's waking up. Lead off double. Uh oh, and Branyan. It's... And they jump out to a lead. We hold the runner at third on that ground out. And we're gonna escape with just one run allowed. Could have been worse. Let's see if we can get Vasquez here. I got pretty accustomed to him getting wiped out his later days in Houston, so I could see a little bit more of that. Kevin Ori has a double with two outs. And Tyler Houston lines it into center field, and we're tied. Just like that. Head into the third. And Lopez doesn't have a whole lot of stamina. He'll go usually five or six innings. He's got an easy third. Thrown 43 pitches or 42 pitches, something in there. Dial. Nice play by Benji Gillett short. Damon Smith has a two out single. We made this work last time. Good chance to run here. Nope. And we ground to a field of choice. So we're heading to the fourth. Here's Berkman. Well. Loop single into right. That was weak. Double play, maybe? Yes. Posada is grounded into a double play. Two outs. And I'm glad we did that because Russ Brandon has his second double of the game. And third strikeout for Johan Lopez. Holding up well against this really great Boston lineup. Millar goes deep again. Number 11. Dude's crushing the ball. That's the Edgardo Vasquez we know. Looks to serve up lots of homers. Oh, and he decides he wants to take it out on Kevin Ori. Plunks him. Houston flies out, and Maxwell strikes out. Or up 2-1. And I shouldn't have spoken. Oh, didn't get out of here, but that's a triple for Kevin Grejack. Elmar can't get the run in. Pops out. Benji Gill does, so we're tied at two now. All right. Got ourselves a close game here. First two men are out. And it looks like a 1-2-3 inning for Vasquez. We're going to sixth now. Oh, that's Pat Burrell just launched one into the left center field bleachers. Red Sox 3-2. Strikeout Berkman. Batting average falls before 21. 
Posada has got his second extra base hit of the game. Oh, Brannion just goes deep on us too. He's three for three with three extra base hits. That was off Mike McMullen, our Rule 5 draft pick. Who surrendered three straight hits now. That ball was crushed as well, but a diving catch by Demon Smith. So Red Sox up 5-2. Need to hit the gas here on the run scoring. We want to stick with this team. Nothing doing. This is a different Edgardo Vasquez. And the one I traded from Houston. McMullen's in his second inning of work, and that one went much better than the first. Okay, Kevin Ory, another double. Good start. And much like in the second inning, Tyler Houston. Brings him in with a in, with a single. Oh, Mike Lowell's pinch hitting can't do anything. Neither can Holbert Cabrera. Okay, two out walk for Ratliff. Damon Smith's got a chance to do something here. He does. Base hit center field coming around. Not coming around. Holds at third for Junior Felix. Ah. Uh, Lines out to right. Big chance lost there. Joaquin Benoit in now. And we finally retire Branyan. But we can't get Dean Palmer, and he gets that run back for the Red Sox. 6 3. Showing some signs of life against Vasquez. He's over 100 pitches now. It's cruising through the eighth. And it looks like we're going to get Mel Rojas in the ninth, unless the Red Sox score. All these bloop hits they're getting to right field. Too many. And it's Paniagua. He's been very fortunate so far this season. And he's going to get Breedy and Burl. So we need three in the ninth. And it is Mel Rojas. Leadoff walk would be nice. Oh, he struck him out looking. And a 138 ERA, 14 to 2 strikeout to walk ratio. Lowell grounds out. It's up to Brian Banks, pitch hitting. All right. He's on with an infield single. There's a little bit of hope. Ratliff strikes out, and we lose the opener to the Red Sox. We gave him a fight, but Boston pulled away in the late innings for the win. Russ Brannon was the star with a home run and two doubles. Kevin Ory and Tyler Houston teamed up a few times, and Kevin Millar retook the team lead in home runs. But Edgardo Vasquez was tough throughout. He seems like a totally different pitcher than last season. Mel Rojas cleaned up for an easy 12th save. Johan Lopez wasn't too bad considering the opposition, but Rule 5 drafty Mike McMullen suffered a second tough outing in his last three appearances. In other American League games, the Royals and Orioles both lost, so we don't lose any ground in the wildcard race. Brian Holman signed with the Angels and won his 100th career game. I had him with the Rangers and the Astros. Mark Grudzielanek went 2 for 4 with Tampa Bay and now has a 20 game hitting streak. In the National League, Tim Rumor leads the Phillies to another win. That's his seventh. Right fielder Kevin Belcher hit his 200th career home run in that game. In real life, he had zero home runs in 18 career plate appearances. Andy Ashby goes eight strong for the Reds as they sneak past the Padres 2-1, and the Pirates beat the Expos on a Derek Jeter walk-off walk. The Milwaukee Brewers also win on a walk-off. Moise Salou singled off Joe Atwater to score Frank Catalanado in that game. The Diamondbacks made it three walk-offs in the National League today. Nick Theodoro is the hero in that one. Tony Bautista ties teammate Juan Gonzalez for the league lead in the home runs with 13, but the star of the show was Todd Zeal, who went 5-for-5 five five with two home runs. 
There are your NL standings after today's games. The Phillies and Dodgers are looking to run away with things early, while the NL Central race is pretty fierce. No movement in the AL divisions either, though the Red Sox and White Sox created some more distance. It's a good thing you stuck around, because we're not finished. We just traded catcher Dan Wilson to the Detroit Tigers for Jason Isringhausen. Seems like a great trade on the surface, though I am always suspicious of the AI on the highest trade setting. Isringhausen has been a good closer, but definitely had a down year in 1998. As for why the Tigers want to trade him, the best story I can stitch together is that a down season caused the Tigers to use Aaron Fultz in the closer role, despite promising that role to Isringhausen in his contract. So now they have a disgruntled pitcher with a selfish personality, probably making noise in their clubhouse. We, on the other hand, can promise Isringhausen the closer role. He only has four years of service time, so we have him via arbitration through next season. Jose Paniagua is optioned to AAA to make room, and he doesn't seem too happy about it, but his poor peripherals belie what appeared to be a strong start to the season. It's a good chance he'll be back up at some point this season, though. Dan Wilson heads to Detroit to back up Mike Sweeney. While he's an upgrade to what they had before, it's hard to figure why they wanted him with that contract. He could still fetch free agent compensation after this season on the back of his strong 1998. Sitting on the bench this year isn't going to help his cause, though. Ramon Hernandez gets the call up for us. He's a bat-first catcher who loves hitting left-handed pitchers, which is great because that's all he's going to face. But on the downside, he's never actually hit the way my scout suggests he can. That even continued in AAA so far this season, though being unhappy back in the minors may have been a part of that. That'll do it for today. What do you think of the trade? Comment if you've got any thoughts. Also, please like and subscribe if you're enjoying the series. Hope to see you for another update in late June.